This is the first lesson in a third lecture, a uh, lecture called Network Reductions or Network Theorems. This is a third lecture that's part of a lecture series covering basic network analysis. The first lecture uh, was basic circuit analysis. The second one was um, introduction to or basic network analysis where we learn nodal analysis and mesh analysis. And now we've arrived at this third lecture which uh, introduces you to several network theorems and they all lead to what I call network reductions or simplifications. And they often allow us then, when applied to circuits, to actually reduce the complexity of a circuit to the point where we don't have to use nodal or, or mesh analysis, or at least it's a much uh, a problem with fewer nodes or fewer meshes. In, in this uh, lecture, we will be covering the following five topics, linearity, superposition, source transformation, and along the way load lines, Thevenin and Norton theorems, and then maximum power theorem. I believe this uh, lecture is spread out over, I think, what will be seven lessons. And the, in the first lesson, lesson, we will be talking about linearity. So what I have drawn here is a system. Now I'm going to abstract a little away from, from circuits now because linearity is a very broad uh, term that defines a whole class of systems that could be found in any one of a number of physical domains. So circuits, electrical circuits is just one of them. So what I have here is a, is a system. I'm calling it T. It has an input X and an output Y. And we'll use some abstract notation at first. We'll say that um, Y is the result or the response when uh, the system operates on an input X. Okay, and we'll use that kind of a notation. Now some examples of a, of a system, and here's a, a simple system. Uh, we'll say uh, y is equal to 2x. All right, that's a system. And uh, we uh, put in 1, we get 2 out. Okay, another, um, another system could be y is equal to uh, the integral of x. Right, that'd be another system. And it could be a combination of all of these things. Okay, let's just stick with something really simple. Let's stick with this x equals or y equals 2x. Do you think that's a linear system? Is that we haven't defined linearity yet, but no doubt you've heard of linearity. You've used it in math classes before. Is uh, y equals 2x is that a linear equation? Uh, sure, it is. We've plotted it over here. It's got a slope of two and it's a straight line. Right. Now, if I modified this equation a little bit, such that the graph that results is a graph with uh, a slope of 2, but now it has an offset. Maybe it has an offset of 3. Now, the question is, is that a linear system? Would a system whose input is x and output y be, um, be linear if it was described by that, that orange line? Well, that's what we're going to answer here. Uh, in this in this uh, lesson, at first glance, and probably from a math perspective, you'd say, "Oh, well, that's a this is a uh, y equals mx plus b equations, right? That's a that's a linear equation. So sure, it's a linear linear equation. It must be a linear system. But well, we're actually going to show that uh, that system is not linear. Not when we talk about linearity uh, of a system." So we need to define what we mean by, by linearity. One thing to point out here is that, um, before I go on to the formal definition, uh, this term here, or this line, this blue one, uh, has only um, first order x term, right? Whereas this guy has first and zeroth order x. And we may not think of it that way, but this really is x to the zero, is it not? And we're going to see that a system is linear only if it has x to the first terms. Any other terms, any other powers of x will render the system nonlinear. 
So let's define what we mean by linearity, okay? Okay, a linear system satisfies two things. Satisfies um, scalability, what we will call scalability, also called homogeneity. And secondly, it satisfies additivity. These concepts in the end are simple, okay? We just have some bigger terms for them. Now, let's um, get a little more formal in how we're going to describe this system. Suppose we have a system y equals t operating on x. And we would say if x is equal to x1, then there's a response y equals to y1. All right, we could write that, of course, as y1 is equal to t operating on x1. But we're going to use a shorter hand notation for this. We're going to re we're going to note this as saying x1 arrow y1. Okay, so applying an x1 input produces an output y1. All right. Uh, Applying another x, call it x2, produces a second output called y2. So now we're going to use that here in defining scalability. If, this is for the system, system t, if an x1 input produces a y1 response, okay, then a, an input, or maybe I'll write it, I'm sorry. Let me, let me go back to my other notation here. y1 is equal to the system t operating on x1. Okay. So if these, then scalability says that t, the system operating on not x1, but some alpha x1, where alpha is just some scaling constant. Okay, will yield, what do you think? If we double the input, alpha is equal to two, then we'd expect the output to double, and that's exactly what scalability says. Okay, so in other words, oops, let me just move this away here. So I, if alpha goes to y1, then alpha I, x1 goes to alpha y1. Simple. That's what scalability means. All right. Then additivity means that if x1 input produces a response y1, and if an input x2 produces an output y2, then the combination of the two as an input, okay, we'll say this, we'll say then x3 being equal to the sum of the two, if that's what we, we apply, that will produce a third response, y3, which is nothing more than the sum of the individual, the response, responses to the individual inputs. All right, so we put that in, in another form here. We could say um, uh, y3 is equal to, or no, let's say this, t, the system operating on x1 plus x2 is going to be equal to the response you get from just applying x1 plus the response you get just from applying x2. Okay. So now let's go back to the question. Is this line, uh, this orange line up here, 
y equals mx plus b, is that actually linear? Let's test it out. So consider y is equal to mx plus b. Is it a linear system? OK, well, we just need to test for these two conditions. So let's, let's try this. So apply, so we'll say y1 is equal to t operating on x1. OK, so what is our system? Our system just takes the input, multiplies it by m, and then adds b. That's it. y1 is equal to m times x1 plus b. Now the question is, does t operating on alpha times x1 yield alpha times y1? Okay, So we scale the input to the output scale. And we already know y1, right? y1 is this mx1 plus b. So is it equal to alpha mx1 plus b? alpha b? That's the question. So let's try it. So what we do is this right here, we're going to apply alpha x1 to our system. So it's going to go into there, right? Oh, I should say, yeah, for into, M, into the x of mx plus b. So that will yield m times alpha x1 plus and then b. And that is, so now we have to compare, are these two equal? Now we're not, we're not only supposed to, according to the, uh, the scalability here, um, not only is the first term supposed to scale by alpha, but the second term must scale by alpha. Alpha b, b must scale as well, if we're indeed going to have the output uh, scale in proportion to the input, but we find that actually only the first term scales, not the second term. And so we can conclude that therefore y equals mx plus b, and this is for the system where x is the input, so just one input, and y is output. And just to be clear, b is a constant, a coefficient. OK. Therefore, y equals mx plus b is nonlinear. It's a nonlinear system, which is going to be confusing for some. And some will even argue, because after all, f y equals mx plus b is the equation of a line and a line is linear, OK? But because mx plus b does not satisfy scalability, it cannot be considered linear, OK? And furthermore, if you try to check for additivity, um, you're going to find that it also doesn't satisfy additivity. So we can, if you want to just um, practice that, we can, we can look at, an ex at a particular example. So here we go, example. Let's say we have a system that's equal to 2x plus 1. Right? So if we have y1 is equal to, I'm sorry, x1, let's let that equal to 1. And we'll try x2 is equal to 2. So if you apply an x1 to the system, what are you going to get? 2 times 1 plus 1, you'll get 3. And if you apply a 2 to the system, you'll get 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. Now the question is, now does the system operating on x1 plus x2, in other words 1 plus 2 or 3, does that yield y1 plus y2, or in other words uh, 8? Well t operating on 3 actually gives us 2 times 3 
plus 1, which is equal to 7, which is not equal to 8. Therefore, mx plus b does not satisfy additivity. So this is kind of abstract at this point. We're going to, the nice thing is with the circuits that we're studying, they're all linear. We're going to make sure they're linear. And so we're going to be able to do some powerful things thanks to the fact that they're linear. But before we could start leveraging off of that, we needed to spend some time actually exploring and defining what we mean by a linear system or a linear circuit. In closing, let me just point out, or let me ask the question. Okay, is a resistor linear? And I think I already uh, seeded the answer, right? So uh, Ohm's law says that V is equal to R times I. So we can, we can treat a resistor abstractly as if you put in an I, you'll get an output that is equal to V, um, which is R times I, right? If you put in a V, that's another, it's hard to say which is the input and which is the output at all. They're, either one could be, right? Here you're going to have I is equal to 1 over R. Here I should just call it a system T, where this is a resistor. Right, this will be I is equal to 1 over RV. But you can clearly see there's no B. It's not plus B. And so it can be shown that a resistor is a linear system, a linear element. And furthermore, we'll be able to say that when we study capacitors and inductors, Although they involve an integral or a derivative, it turns out that taking the derivative or taking the integral is also a linear operation, meaning that it satisfies scalability and it satisfies additivity. And so uh, capacitors and inductors as well as resistors are all linear elements. And if we study networks that are made up of capacitors, resistors, and inductors, we are studying a linear system and we can take full advantage of the linear tools that we will be developing. Uh, and, and so the, the rest of the, this lecture on network reductions actually is based upon the fact that we are studying linear systems. If we weren't, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't do source transformation, we couldn't do superposition, we couldn't do Thevenin or Norton theorem, et cetera.